few months ago, I decided that I was just going to finally break down and buy myself an M1A. Um, the gun you're looking at is not the gun as it was purchased. <laughs> uh, it's gone through quite an evolution in just a few months. And I promised myself that when I got it, I got the M1A standard. Okay, the, the $1,400, $1, $1,400 model. And I promised myself I would just keep it as is, maybe get like, you know, the military butt plate and the, and the military sling and just leave it and just shoot it, you know, for fun. And uh, it was horribly inaccurate, um, but it was really smooth. It was fun to shoot. And I, I just, I, I just can't help myself, you know, messing with things. So, so I decided to start doing some things to it to try to accurize it. And in my, in my journey um, over the last few months, I, I've come out on the other end um, only adding you know, an additional about $400 to the cost of the gun with a sub MOA rifle, if you can believe that, a standard M1A. And here's what's interesting about that. The M1A um, from Springfield, uh, well, for the M14 slash M1A, um, they can get up to four grand, even five grand. Um, they, the Springfield has the loaded, which is about sixteen hundred. The the match, the super match, uh, the the M twenty one, which is I think like f something like four grand or close to it, something it, just crazy. And they have really good parts. I mean, they have Krieger barrels. Um, you know, it, they're bedded, the unitized gas systems. I mean, they're just really you know they they do a lot to them. Um, Fulton Armory. A really really good company they make really expensive uh, m14s uh, as well m14 slash you know m1a the civilian semi-automatic version so anyway this gun was honestly it was for moa when i got it okay and and if anyone doesn't you know who doesn't know what that means it means at 100 yards it was grouping about four inches okay so i didn't know a whole lot about the gun so it was kind of like learn as you go First thing I noticed about the gun, just knowing a little bit about rifles for my bolt actions, is this synthetic stock. They call it composite. It's it's kind of plastic, and there's a lot of flex to it. It's really light. There's a lot of flex to it. Can't see, but I'm flexing this right now. It's bending. Okay, there's no. It's just all plastic. Okay, it just for me it added it made the gun kind of have a cheap feel. Now it didn't come with this um, butt plate, it came with the rubber uh, butt pad, and but I, I thought I wanted it, I put it on and it was so slick. I, I had to put tape on it and it still was slick. So I just decided to not use it. The stock that's on here is just a GI fiberglass one that I found online for 40 bucks. And I painted it and then I sealed it with polyurethane. And the camera isn't that great and then my lighting's not that great, but it came out really nice. And um, did the scope as well. That's a Nikon Buckmaster mil dot, 4.5 to 14. And it's heavier. The stock is a little bit heavier, but it's really, really stiff and fits the gun really tight. Uh, it was a big, big, it was the very first thing I did to this rifle and I thought it was just a really big improvement. So what I did first is I added a scope mount and I went with quality. You can't go wrong with these Sadlack mounts. I know that um, you know Springfield makes a mount. Uh, I think it's Chinese made, but branded by Springfield. There's a lot of other companies that make them. The, the, this is a really good mount. Okay, this is the aluminum version. I wanted the steel version, but they didn't have it in stock anywhere. So I spent, got a hundred bucks less, spent a hundred bucks less, and got the aluminum. And the aluminum has held up. Five hundred rounds. It's just been perfect. I don't see it ever. I don't see it ever having a problem. Really, just the way it's designed. It it fits well into here. I torqued it to specs. Torqued it to specs here. All red Loctited. It, it's good to go. The the rings are the the Burris Extreme Tactical. They're you know over engineered really but they're aluminum so they're not all that heavy and this is just a really tough scope package and it has not moved at all even with the 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 harsh recoil of, of the gun itself you know it doesn't recoil that hard as far as a 308 but you know 308 still enough in a semi-automatic to beat on a a scope and amount this um I, I did this almost last you know the scope sits kind of high on this platform and you know I had a, a cheek riser that I kind of taped on and it just didn't I don't know 
the gun that's like, you know, 1500 plus with, with all the extra stuff, I just thought invest the extra $40 and get a nice, uh, a nice cheek piece. So this, I got this from Fulton Armory and it's really, it is, it's really nice. So, so with that, uh, I started experimenting with, experimenting with some ammo and I got the gun down to like two, two and a half MOA. Then what I did is I bought a couple extra parts that go inside the rifle and I'm not going to take the rifle apart to show you these parts. But what I did is I bought a Sadlac gas piston, a Sadlac op rod. That's the, the rod that, uh, that the, that the big operating spring goes on top of some tub springs. And the you know the the operating spring and the trigger spring, Th those improvements, okay, along with finding good you know it, it shoots good with any 168, 175 grain ammo, um, Federal. I, I got this cheap HSM stuff. Um, found it at Cabela's for a good price, like 15, 16 bucks for 20, and, and it shoots great, uh, really good. But when I made those those additions, uh, the gun. <laughs> Honestly, you know, I, I have no reason to lie about my groups or exaggerate. I've never done that or seen the value in it ever. And I just want to show you some of the groups that I've done with this rifle over the last few weeks. It's really, it's nothing, it's, it's nothing short of amazing. I mean, look, look at the, the bottom group there. That first one was my first group of the day. This is 100 yards with that HSM 168 grain. That's a sub MOA group. Here we go again. HSM, sub MOA. HSM, sub MOA, 100 yards. Here's a five shot group with the 175. And I was kind of rapid firing that. Meaning, you know, I'd shoot, pause, shoot, pause, you know, I got the, the one down at the bottom that kind of spread the group out, but look at those four. It's amazing. That's what you would see, you know, yeah, there are other bolt guns that shoot better. Well, yeah, absolutely. Thick, barreled, short bolt guns, but you cannot compare this to a bolt gun. Those are two different beasts. This holds 20 rounds of rock and roll, 308 semi-automatic gas gun designed in the 50s off of a World War II era design. That's just, that's unbelievable. Unbelievable to me. A thin barrel, just some cheap Springfield carbon steel barrel, not chrome lined. What 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 are you gonna get? If you if you buy one of these and you spend four K or three K, how how much better are you gonna get? I mean really you gotta ask yourself that. if I had the money, I, I really like this platform now, I really appreciate it after having it for a while. So if I had the money, yeah, I would buy a Fulton Armory or I'd buy a um which, by the way, a great company. I've ordered a few things from them, and they're great. They get their stuff out so fast. And um, they have a really cool website if you ever check it out. But, um, you know, if I had, you know, yeah, I would buy one, definitely, because I really like the platform. But this gun is doing what I want it to do. It's doing so much more than I ever thought it could do. This is probably my best group. That's 200 yards with the HSM. That's 1.5 inches at 200 yards. That's sub MOA at 200 yards. And a semi-automatic, and I and I call this a, you know, a DM rifle. You know, designated moron for me. Because that's all I'm really doing is shooting it at the range. I'm not really, you know, this isn't, you know, going into any serious use. It's just for my my fun. And and believe me, this is by far my favorite rifle. I sold my SIG uh 556, which I did a review on a while ago for this gun. And um, I couldn't be happier. I mean, I, I put some money into it, but it's just people see this gun at the range. They're just in awe of it. And especially, you know, that it's accurate. This is a Harris bipod swivel. Okay. That's when you, when you lay prone and, and you use the bipod and you just feel that in your, you know, the, that smooth recoil pulse in your shoulder. And it's just, you know, firing out those heavy 168, 175 grain, 308 slugs with such authority and such accuracy. It's just, man, it just feels so good. You know, and don't get me wrong. ARs are great, okay? I, 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 I own them. I enjoy them. 
but uh, you know, I own and enjoy this too. No gas in the face like an AR. The bolt just doesn't get dirty. It just the, it's weird. This gun just doesn't get dirty. I mean, and, and I know I'm not putting mag after mag after it around after round, but I mean, this bolt face. Wish I could illustrate somehow just how smooth this gun is. Um, you know, on on tape. I'm sorry, on camera, on tape, it's not the 80s. But, um, you know, the bolt just doesn't get dirty. It just, it, uh, I mean, what can I say? It's it's not that heavy either. Uh, because the barrel is a thinner profile, and I don't know, I mean, I got, you know, aluminum uh, scope mount, and uh, I weighed it, unloaded, uh, 10 and 3 quarter pounds under 11 pounds unloaded. That's amazing for this kind of gun. You can fire it off hand, you can walk around with it. It's not like, you know, a heavy like piece of artillery, you know, that weighs 14 or 15 pounds. Just a really, really sweet rifle. Um, I can show you some of those parts too um, that I replaced. And I'm, here's the, okay, here's the op rod. Here's the, I'm sorry, here's the op rod spring and trigger spring. These are the stock ones, you know, like the spring's folded up and there's the trigger, uh, the trigger springs in there as well. Okay, now it took me like 10, 15 minutes. This is the gas cylinder. This isn't the one that was swapped. This is another Sadlack one. This is their tin, T-I-N coated one. And I, I got the polished and the tin. They, they say, you know, try different gas pistons in your rifle and see which one works better. I don't understand how the gas piston has an effect on accuracy, but it does. And um, <laughs> for, for whatever reason, the, the polished one works a little better than that tin, so I have that one in there now. But, um, but yeah, I mean, everything, you know, expensive gun, these mags. I stick with the Springfield mags. I just don't have that many. A lot of guys buy, you know, experiment with the Chinese-made ones or the the other ones. I get the Springfield because I, I've heard nothing but good things about them, that they work, and they most certainly do for me. They work. And I've never had a failure with this gun. The only failures that I have uh, encountered were was when I first put this scope mount on and had the new operating spring a few rounds were getting caught in between, like the shell casings were getting caught in between the the uh, the scope mount and the rifle right in there. And it happened two or three times. And that was it. And then the, the spring kind of broke in and it, it never happened again. And th there's been no failures with this rifle. It's, it's just amazing. It's just, sometimes you get what, you know, you don't always get what you pay for. Is the M1A standard worth fourteen hundred bucks? Uh, I want to say no. <laughs> it's you know probably not even worth seven or eight hundred bucks. But hey, where else are you gonna go? It's the only game in town for something you know for that rifle priced you know at that point. So yeah, I mean yeah, it's expensive. You're gonna pay a lot, but you're gonna be if you if you. If you're lucky enough to get one where you can get it shooting as good as I got this one shooting, you're going to be really proud. It's going to be something you're going to be really proud of because you put a little bit of work into it. And now you have a rifle that, I mean, it's awesome. It doesn't weigh that much. It's a semi-automatic beast, gas piston operated beast that's able to just eat mags of 20 rounds of 308. So, you know, you can't even compare it to a bolt gun in that respect. And it's practically as accurate as a bolt gun. You're going to have to, you know, it's going to be a really expensive bolt gun shooting really good stuff that's going to beat that. So anyway, just wanted to share this rifle with you and, uh, you know, I like it a lot.